been a very great pleasure to meet with Chancellor Cole again for a friendly and highly useful discussion. This year marks the 40th anniversary of a series of events that have shaped the destiny of our two countries. In 1948, the United States stepped forward and helped spark the post-war recovery of West Germany and Europe and assisted in starting the constitutional process that created a West German state. In response to Soviet challenges, we launched the Berlin Airlift and aided in laying the foundation for collective security and the economic integration of Western Europe. It was in this crucible of events that the modern relationship between the Federal Republic of Germany and the United States was formed, a relationship that has prospered and many times proved its value to both our countries. As befits good friends, the Chancellor and I have met regularly since we assumed office. Our discussions reflect the richness of our relationship and the many interests we share. I especially benefit from hearing the Chancellor's views on the world topics. Among the many subjects we discussed today was the state of the NATO alliance, including our common defense efforts and arms control strategy. I thank the Chancellor for his support throughout the long INF negotiations and now for the treaty itself. This treaty represents a major political victory for NATO, a success far beyond what many thought possible. It carries important lessons on how successfully to negotiate arms reductions with the Soviet Union. We also review progress on the NATO alliance's next arms control priorities. These include negotiations toward a 50% reduction in strategic arms, a verifiable global ban on chemical weapons, and redressing the serious imbalances in conventional forces in Europe. We agree that we must deal with the Soviet Union from a position of realism, strength, and alliance unity. We agree that the alliance must maintain both military strength and readiness. These are the underpinnings and preconditions of any successful dialogue with the Soviet Union. Only a strong West can have a positive influence on the way in which the Soviet Union deals with other countries and of its own people. We know that a weak Western alliance cannot. The NATO summit meeting early next month will provide an opportunity to continue discussion of these important matters within the alliance as a whole. Chancellor and I also discussed economic and trade issues. In particular, I told the Chancellor that I supported the efforts he's made to stimulate the West German economy, and I expressed the hope that he would do more. The Chancellor, in turn, welcomed our efforts to reduce the U.S. federal deficit. We both agreed on the need to avoid trade protectionism. Protectionism would be an economic disaster for both our countries. In the course of our discussions, we also touched on the subject close to both our parts, the city of Berlin and its brave people. We both agreed that they must be included in whatever benefits improve East-West relations may bring. We look forward to a positive response to the invitation of Western powers extended last December to the Soviet Union to join with us in taking steps to improve the lives of Berliners. Chancellor's visits to Washington are always welcome. We'll be seeing each other again soon in the NATO summit in Brussels. And until then, we do not say goodbye, but I'll be here soon.
my visit to Washington, and this is my ninth bilateral meeting with President Reagan, is a war return visit, the memorable visit the President paid to Berlin and Bonn last June. The uh, Berlin Initiative, announced by you, Mr. President, was one of the points on which we focused in our conversation. I once again express my appreciation and gratitude to President Reagan for this initiative, and I assured him that the Federal Republic and the Federal Government will do all it can in order to make its contribution towards the success of this initiative. Inzwischen stehen die drei westlichen Schutzmächte wieder der Sowjetunion über dieses Thema im Gespräch. Der Präsident hat mir zugesagt, dass Außenminister Schulz bei seinem Versuch in Moskau auch mit der sowjetischen Führung darüber sprechen wird, dass Berlin von Anfang an in die positive Entwicklung der Ost-West-Beziehungen einbezogen wird. In the meantime, the three Western protective powers have ended in talks with the Soviet Union on this issue. And the President assured me that Secretary of State Schulz the occasion of his forthcoming visit to Moscow will make it plain to his Soviet interlocutors that Berlin must be included from the very beginning in positive developments of West East relations. The President, I thank you for the openness of your country, and I thank you for the fact that the 6th of October 1987 was the first time haben und ich darf Sie bitten, diesen Tag zu einer ständigen Einrichtung werden zu lassen. Mr. President, I may take this opportunity to express my appreciation having issued a proclamation declaring the 6th of October 1987 German American Day and I may request you to make this a permanent feature. Herr Präsident, wir haben intensiv gesprochen über die Entwicklung des west ost -Schalten. In keiner Phase der Nachkriegsgeschichte haben die Vereinigten Staaten und die Sowjetunion in einer so dichten Folge im Dialog auf höchster Ebene gesprochen, wie gerade in den letzten Jahren. Das dritte Gipfeltreffen zwischen Ihnen, Herr Präsident, und Generalsekretär Gorbatschow, hat mit dem INF-Vertrag erstmals in der Geschichte den Weg zu wirklicher Abrüstung eröffnet. Ich darf Ihnen auch nochmals hier für meine Landsleute in der Bundesrepublik Deutschland zu diesem Erfolg gratulieren. Der Erfolg ist ein Erfolg Ihrer Präsidentschaft. Und der INF-Vertrag liegt im Interesse der USA, des Atlantischen Bündnisses insgesamt und natürlich auch im Interesse unseres Landes. We had intensive uh, exchanges on the present state of West East relations. Never in the post-war history has the United States of America and the Soviet Union been engaged in such an intensive dialogue at uh, the highest level as in the last few years. And with the IMF agreement, the third summit meeting between the new Mr. President and General Secretary Gorbachev, has for the first time in history opened the way for its genuine disarmament. And I have seized this opportunity once again to express my congratulations to the President on this success, the success which will be your success and which will always be linked with your presidency. The INF agreement is in the interest of the United States of America, it's in the interest of the Atlantic Alliance, and it is at least also in the interest of our own country. Mr. President, the here in Washington, or the also in the USA, Bedenken gegen diesen Vertrag vorbringen, kann sich auf die Regierung der Bundesrepublik Deutschland berufen. Ich habe deshalb gestern in meinen Gesprächen mit der Führung des Senats klar und unmissverständlich für eine Ratifizierung ohne einschränkende Zusätze plädiert. Nobody who has objections as far as this agreement is concerned, be it here in Washington or somewhere in the United States, can point to the Federal Republic of Germany. And that is the reason why yesterday, when I had talks and meetings 
with the leadership of the Senate, I pleaded in no uncertain terms in favor of ratification of this agreement without any restricting amendments. The President spoke from the now starting negotiations. The Bundes Regierung supports with nachdruck the halbierung of the strategic offensive potential by the Großmächte. Weil wir glauben, dass dieser Schritt nicht nur im Interesse der USA, sondern auch im Urheitsrecht im Interesse der Bundesrepublik Deutschland und Westeuropa. Mr. President, you referred to the present negotiations concerning STAR. The government of the Federal Republic of Germany vigorously supports a 50% cut of the strategic offensive potential of either power because this step not only in the interest of the United States of America, but it would also be in the very real interest of the Federal Republic of Germany and of Western Europe. Wir treten nachdrücklich für das Verbot chemischer Waffen ein. Und wir erwarten und verhoffen die baldige Verabschiedung eines Mandats der Verhandlungen über konventionelle Stabilität in ganz Europa, vom Atlantik bis zum Oral. Und gemäß Der seit den Bündnisbeschlüssen von Reykjavik und Brüssel festliegenden Position reden wir dafür ein, dass es im Zusammenhang mit der Herstellung eines konventionellen Gleichgewichts und einer weltweiten Beseitigung chemischer Waffen auch zu deutlichen und überprüfbaren Reduzierungen nuklearer Systeme kürzere Reichweite kommen muss. Ziel muss sein, gleiche Obergrenzen, keine Nulllösung, Kern, keine kernwaffenfreie Zonen und schon gar nicht eine Denuklearisierung Europas. Mr. President, we staunchly support a worldwide ban on chemical weapons, and we uh, support the early adoption of a mandate for negotiations on conventional stability in the whole of Europe, from the Atlantic to the Euro. In accordance with the decision take, decisions taken by the Alliance in Reykjavik and in Brussels, I have supported the position that in conjunction, conjunction with the establishment of conventional balance, the global elimination of chemical weapons, tangible and verifiable reduction of nuclear systems of shorter range should also be reached, the objective being equal seedlings, no zero solution, no demilitarized zone, and in Europe, least of all, in Europe. We are not aware that these abrisos material Genau wie die Maßnahmen zur Erhaltung unserer gemeinsamen Sicherheit in ein Gesamtkonzept unseres Bündnisses eingebracht werden müssen. Ich hoffe mir eine vom kommenden NATO-Gipfel dazu. We were in agreement that all these disarmament questions and issues, as well as the necessary measures to preserve our common security, should be combined and form an overall concept for our alliance and we think that the forthcoming NATO summit meeting must be an incentive to that and give new impulses to that effort. Wir haben vereinbart, dass wir über all diese Fragen die notwendigen bilateralen Gespräche führen. Und auf dieser Linie wollen wir auch einen Beitrag dazu leisten, dass das Vertrauen zwischen West und Ost ausgebaut werden kann. Dazu gehören für uns notwendigerweise die Lösung regionaler Konflikte ebenso wie die Achtung der Menschenrechte. Dies gilt gerade auch für die Staaten des Warschauer Pakts. We have uh, agreed that we will remain in bilateral contact as far as all these issues are concerned. And along this line, and the President and I myself uh, were in complete agreement on that, Trust and confidence uh, between West and East must be further developed and intensified, and this would also include the solution of regional conflicts as well as ensuring respect for human rights, particularly so in the countries of the Warsaw Pact. Herr Präsident, wir beide wissen, und Sie haben es ja eben erwähnt, aus dieser sehr engen und freundschaftlichen Zusammenarbeit der letzten Jahre dass die gerade vor uns liegende Phase der Beziehungen und Betrachtungen zwischen Ost und West nur vernünftig gestaltet werden können, wenn wir miteinander in Geschlossenheit, 
enger Abstimmung und Einigkeit an die Probleme herangehen. Mr. President, you have just made the same point and we all are in agreement that we will be able to face up to the tasks ahead of us in this uh, new phase can be mastered only when we show unity, coherence and a closest measure of coordination and consultation. Und Herr Präsident, ich will hier gerade im Weißen Haus vor der Öffentlichkeit Ihres Landes als deutscher Bundeskanzler hinzufügen, die Bundesrepublik Deutschland kann ihr berechtigtes Anliegen im Interesse der Menschen in Deutschland die Folgen der Teilung zu erleichtern, Grenzen durchlässiger zu machen, nur in Gemeinschaft und im Verbund der freien Völker Westeuropas und der Vereinigten Staaten erreichen. Wir sind Teil der westlichen Gemeinschaft und wir bleiben es. Herr Mr. President, I would like to take this opportunity here to express as Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany before the American public that we are fully aware of the fact that the Federal Republic of Germany knows that only together with their allies and only together with the support of all the free nations of Western Europe and the United States of America will it be possible to attain its legitimate aim of easing in the interest of the people the consequences of the division of our country and to make the frontier between East and West more per permeable. We are belonging to the West and that is the way it will be also in future. Herr Präsident, ich bin dieses Mal eben nicht nur als deutscher Bundeskanzler als Gast zu Ihnen gekommen, sondern auch als der amtierende Ratspräsident der Europäischen Gemeinschaft. Wir sprachen über den vor wenigen Tagen in Brüssel erfolgreichen Sondergipfel. Wir sprachen über die dort getroffenen Maßnahmen, insbesondere zur Beschränkung der Agrarproduktion. Und wir sprachen auch über unseren gemeinsamen Willen, auf alle Fälle alles zu tun, damit der freie Welthandel erhalten bleibt. Und Sie haben es begrüßt dass auch in Brüssel keine Fettsteuer beschlossen wurden. Mr. President, uh, I came here not only in my capacity as Chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany, but also as the Chairman and the President of the European Community. I was able to report to you about the successful conclusion of this uh, summit meeting, the European Community we had a week ago in Brussels, and the measures we agreed upon there, particularly the restriction and the limitation of agricultural uh, production and our commitment to the maintenance and to the support of a common continued uh, common policy favoring continued free trade all over the world where some of the main decisions we have taken there and I also assured you that we will certainly not adapt a tax on oils and fats Herr Präsident, das gehört für mich zu den besten Erfahrungen bei meinen Besuchen in diesen Jahren hier bei Ihnen im Weißen Haus, dass wir uns im Blick auf die transatlantischen Wirtschafts- und Handelsbeziehungen immer darin einig waren, dass der Freihandel und eine entschiedene Absage zum Protektionismus dem Geist unserer Beziehungen und den Aufgaben und Anforderungen der Zukunft entspricht. Mr. President, it has been a reassuring experience in all the visits I pay to you here in the White House that as far as our commercial relations, transatlantic commercial and economic relations are concerned, we have always renewed our commitment to the concept of a free trade and to rejection of protectionism, that this is part of the spirit in which we are facing these tasks and in which we will be able to live up to the tasks of the future. Herr Präsident, nochmals sehr herzlichen Dank für diese freundschaftliche Atmosphäre, für das freundschaftliche Miteinander und die Unterstützung durch alle Ihre Mitarbeiter im Kabinett und darüber hinaus. Es waren, so glaube ich, sagen zu dürfen, zwei kurze, aber zwei gute Tage hier in Washington. Wir wollen in dieser Weise auch in Zukunft arbeiten. 
Mr. President, once again, I thank you very much for the extremely friendly atmosphere for our exchanges and uh, for the support I've been receiving from you, from the members of your cabinet and the members of your sta staff. These have been two short days I spent here in Washington, but I think these were two good days. And uh, I think uh, it is this spirit in which we will go on working also in future together. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, your suggestion during your last visit for a U.S.-German Youth Exchange Council has resulted in the recent establishment of a body of prominent Americans and Germans who have accepted the challenge to expand youth exchanges between our two countries. I fully support the work of this Youth Exchange Council and share your strong personal commitment to advancing mutual understanding, particularly between the younger generations in our two countries. I am therefore especially pleased to be able today to exchange with you in the presence of Director Wick and Professor Wiedenfeld, the two coordinators of U.S.-German cooperation, copies of the documents establishing the U.S.-German Youth Exchange Council. Thank you. Mm -hmm. well. Herr Präsident, meine Damen und Herren, ich glaube, das, was wir jetzt zuletzt getan haben, war wichtiger als alles, was wir an diesem Tag hätten tun können. Wir haben über die großen Fragen der Weltpolitik gesprochen, aber dies ist die Zukunft, dies ist die nächste Generation und das, was wir jetzt getan haben zum Schluss, wird das Urteil der kommenden Generation über unser Werk bestimmen. Ich bin sicher, Wir werden gut dabei bestehen, wenn wir auf diesem Weg fortfahren. Mr. President, I think what we have just done is more important than anything else we could have possibly done. We discussed the issues of the great international, of the great international issues, but what we have done here concerns the future. It relates to the next generations, and I think they will form their opinion and their judgment about what we have done by measuring us against this background. And I think they will enable us to live up and to stand up to that measurement if we will be able to go on along this line. Thank you very much.